Happy F-A-F-O Friday to those who celebrate, especially Fonnie Willis's 19 defendants who have been booked this week at the Fulton County Jail. Cheers! Welcome to Mama Kratz Mama Chat, part of the Demcast family of podcasts. I'm Donna Schwartz Mills with Aliza Worthington. And uh, our our good friend, Carol Lee, is uh, off today. Um, but reunited, it's been forever. It's been forever, I apologize. No, um, no, no, no apologies. Is that things have been crazy. We've all had, you know, family things and travel and, and all kinds of things happening. Yeah, we have lives. Yeah. It's the way um, it goes. You know, when, when you marry someone whose family lives in another country and your mother-in-law yeah, passes Donna. away, um we ended up spending a whole month in the UK sure which uh which was a lot <laughs> yeah i mean but so. it, it, it's it's a lot but um you know necessary in a lot of ways right oh yeah had to had to, had to do it um so um, while I was there, I ordered this wonderful mug from the Biden-Harris re-election campaign. <laughs> and I just love the way that uh, the Biden campaign is leaning into the dark Brandon um, persona. So good at it. So yeah. good at it. Yeah. Their social media person they have now is fantastic. And... Uh, I love that they trolled the uh, GOP debate. Oh, with the billboards? Billboards. They had ads on the Fox website. Where it was... <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I was just thinking of the billboards, but the ads on the on Fox were too much. That's so funny. I forgot about that. Yeah, I should actually hold this in my right hand which is hard for me because i'm left-handed but that way people can see it oh right of course because otherwise is is there nothing printed on the other side no nothing on the other side oh okay, okay. get on that marketing people yeah like, let me drink your your stuff too yeah now now yeah. if the mug shot had been released sooner if he had reported into the fulton county jail before last night in prime time well, you know, there might have been time to order and receive. I mean, there are so many. I mean, the Lincoln Project has a set of um, mugshot shot glasses with all the big players. Um, the thing that I've seen that I want that that I think is the funniest. I, I don't. I don't want anything with his fucking face on it. <laughs> And there's our first F bomb of the of the podcast. Only three minutes. I know. In. I said F A F O instead but that's of not, that doesn't count. Out. So <laughs> I honestly I don't want anything with his vile visage on it. But something I did see, the only Photoshop thing that I did see that I real that I would consider buying was a photoshop of his 747 with the word trump replaced with his prisoner number and yeah. that was that made me laugh really hard and i enjoyed that one so much i for some reason don't enjoy i'm not getting any joy from the mug shots even i'm i'm getting joy from his having been arrested but like looking at the mug shots just still puts a knot in my stomach because I have to look at his damn face and I know he's fundraising off of it and I know his psychotic base is is um, completely taken in by what they think is probably a super tough, super sexy, thoroughly unrehearsed uh, you know, look, and um, I don't know, it just, it just drives me nuts. I don't know, I kind of liked the the one that was photoshopped so that he had the, um, he had the Joker makeup on. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that one, maybe, okay, that one maybe I would like. 
I, I like the one that had him with actually as an orange with like his hair going in. Well, oh, that was really good. That was funny. The one that had the orange and the lemon peel on top as the hair. Yeah. No, yeah. I, oh, I think that's, oh no, I, I saw the one with the orange and actual like troll hair kind of looking. No, like. this one was an actual orange yeah. with, a, with a funny looking hole poked yeah. out of it for, <laughs> for the mouth. <laughs> Lemon peel on top. Oh, no, I didn't see. I don't think I saw that one. That hair. And it was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So like, like things like that, I might get, but like the one with the mug with like the nine mug shots in, in a grid form. With Paul Lind in the middle. Worse. That one I might get with Paul Lind in the middle because I fucking love Paul Lind so much. Um, it's a disservice to Paul Lind. It is not fair to surround him with all that. No, he needs to be with Wally Cox. Yeah. And, and Cliff Arquette. Yeah, and, and like Carol Burnett above him or Carol Channing Phyllis or Diller. something. Phyllis Diller. Phyllis Diller, you know, some, yeah, that's, God, I used to love that show. It was a great show. Did they still do it? They had like, they had Hollywood squares going for a while. They did, but it, you know, like anything else, it, uh, you don't know really. what's going to take off nowadays. Yeah. We've got so many different uh, channels and things yeah. to, to work with. What I thought was very funny, the country singer Jason Isbell was saying that he kept singing um, P O one one three five eight oh nine. Like uh, like the Jenny song? Yeah. Yeah. I wish it were the right number of digits. It would, yeah, it's, it's awkward, as you could see when I tried to do it. I'm Sorry. That's the dog. But it was a funny tweet. Yes, that is a funny tweet. My kid came home, just so you know. That's nice. Leo's home. That's nice. That's good. Yeah. Mine so, came home from the UK on Wednesday. Thanks for barking. And, uh, and uh, I didn't is sleep. everybody home? Everybody's back. Now everyone now. is home. Now everyone is home. And I didn't sleep, which means that I was going to watch the GOP debate and I fell asleep in the first 30 minutes. Oh. Wait, what and what time of day was it on for you? Was it on at like six o'clock or five o'clock? Well, it was here at yeah, it started at six here. So but you fell asleep at like dinner night. time. Yeah, the previous you know, the night before, because my kid was getting on a plane mm. at at two in the morning, I did not sleep well. <laughs> and again, I couldn't bring myself, I couldn't stomach watching. Well, well that's what happened. Not. I woke up after 40 minutes and watched. Oh, so you caught some minutes. of it. I watched about five minutes of it. And I started screaming at the TV and my husband made me change the goes, just put it on MSNBC, you know, just change the channel. <laughs> Who moderated it? It was Brett Beyer and Martha McCallum. And there, from what I read afterwards, uh -huh. I apologize because I can't give any any kind of firsthand. Don't apologize, people. You know, educated people will know and will have read. You know, but, but you know, they, they don't moderate very much. No, it doesn't sound like it. And you know, you know, we basically have a Republican Party that's full in on what their base wants and the base wants lawlessness. The base wants authoritarianism. The yeah. base wants Trumpism. The base wants to punish anybody who's not the base. Yeah. I, 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 I got that there were a bunch of raise your hand questions, raise your hand if, um, yeah. And they, and they all, they're, they're all for all their bluster and you know attempts to distance themselves for you know the few of them that were attempting to distance themselves from trump you know failed they they would all do exactly they, they would all fail and vote with him and on you know, top they, of that on top of that you know they they it's didn't they say they would all pardon him to answer a question and they yeah. gave him a question about ufos 
<laughs> not. Did they really? They asked in a presidential yeah. debate. They asked questions about UFOs. Yeah, to the to the one guy who was ready to stick it to Trump. Who? Which one was that? Christie. Uh huh. What did they ask him about UFOs? Just a question about its their existence and the government co cover up and stuff. Government cover ups. Uh, in the meantime, Dark Brandon was asked today if uh, he saw the mugshot mm. and President Biden said, I did see it on TV, handsome guy. And then he laughed. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. He is, he is having so much fun with this. Oh, you know, he's trying to stay away from the fray. I know, but you yeah. just know inside he is giggling. I, I don't mean, think he's giggling. I don't think he's giggling because, you know, it's a, it's a danger. Trump will get the nomination even if he's convicted. He can't possibly get convicted by by election day. He can be distracted. Even with the fast trial, <laughs> even with Fonny's. Well, that's not his fast trial. So far, yeah, he's moving to separate. So far, Cheeseboro's the only one that has the October twenty third date. So, so did Sydney, she? Well, because why is that? Because well, she said uh, let's have all nineteen on the twenty third of October, but then Trump the filed judge, a motion. The judge said, you know, Cheeseboro fought, filed the motion for the for the quick trial. Georgia has a statute that lets them have a speedy trial in the next session. So that's when the next session would be. And so Cheeseboro, and, and if it's not granted, the charges get dismissed. So this was right. a gamble on Cheeseboro's part. Right. He asked for the speedy trial and the judge said, okay, you have yeah. it. October 23rd, but not the other ones because they didn't ask for them at that time. Uh, now, I thought, I thought Bonnie Willis said, okay, we'll do, we'll do them all. Now, now, well, Bonnie Willis said she's ready to do them all. Uh -huh. But um, right now it's just Cheeseboro. Today, Sidney Powell also asked for the speedy that's, trial. That's what I thought. I thought Sidney Powell yeah. was also. Right. Right. I mean, what's happening now, you've got 19 defendants. And they're not they're all not getting paid for by Trump's PAC. No, one of them is still in, in being held. Yes, one of them is still being held. He had a he had a hearing today and he was not they have not issued bail for him, probably because he attacked two FBI agents when they tried to serve him his subpoena. Um and he's he's one of the people who was harassing um Ruby, Ruby Freeman and Shay. So um, you've got but, that going. Now, now I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I've heard um, opposing, I've heard opposing um, points of view on whether um, using a bail bondsman is or is not a sign that a defendant doesn't have the money to put up for their bond. Uh, is that, I mean, you know, people I've, I've seen, of course, flying around and please, of course, keep in mind that I don't take, I take all this crap that I see flying around with a huge grain of salt because I understand, you know, unless it's somebody, you know, unless it's somebody like Neil Katyal or somebody who has an established record of, you know, like, you know, a, a true legal mind or whatever, somebody that I know knows what they're talking about. Um, you know, saying, oh, my God, Trump can't even come up with $20,000. He must be broke. Trump has to go to a bail bondsman. What, well, no, you know, Trump did have to come up with 20000 His yeah, That's what I'm saying. He couldn't even come up with $20,000 and he had no, to. No, no, his his bond was set at 200000 Right, which means he, he had, had to come to up with 20000 Right. Bail bondsman gives you, you know, pays the rest of the bail. You still have to pay 10%. Trump had to pay twenty thousand. Oh, okay. So Trump had to come up with twenty thousand. Yeah. And 
I thought he went to sell bonds for 20000 That's my understanding is that you still okay. have to pay 10% in the bail to, to get the bail bondsman. Right. Okay. Bail. And so Rudy had to pay too. But, you know, we know most of his, because Rudy showed up at a private plane. He's broke, but he showed up in a private plane. That's how he got a private plane. Yeah. And uh, the money he took on the private plane probably could have paid for most of his bail, you know? I, I mean, forget the, the, the money spent on that absurd motorcade yesterday could have yeah. paid for several of their bails. Yeah. But I don't think Trump was paying for the motorcade. No, but, but did it have to be, regardless of who paid for it, did he need such? No. no. So absurd. Yeah. Four motorcycles and a couple of police cars. What I am they seeing. They shut down the whole freaking, you know, highway system. Yeah. And what oh. I have seen on social media as an explanation for that is that it's a demonstration of how much law enforcement is in his pocket. Yeah, could be. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that. Yeah, makes sense. Because I've never seen a motorcade that large, even with a sitting president. No, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. No, I never have. That was that was just that yeah. was outrageous. It was theater. It was theater and all those buses lined up, you know, th what, how many, three or four buses lined up at the prison Yeah. to, to obscure his entrance. Well, I understand some of that. Meanwhile, what we when don't we're escort, when we're escorting in front of Planned crazy. Parenthood, I'm not even allowed to use an umbrella to keep to yeah. shield, uh, shield a patient's identity from the, the forced birther's cameras. Well, I'm not even allowed to do that. We have a two tiered system, don't we? Mm -hmm. I can't protect a patient's privacy. Well, but at, but least, we got the mud shot. at least we're seeing a little bit of accountability. And so he's got two civil trials. He's got two lawsuits that he's got to be in court for. He's got the New York trial. He's got this state trial. He's got the two Jack Smith ones. Um, you know, he's complaining that he's being harassed and prosecuted while he's running for president but basically he decided to run for president in the middle of these prosecutions. Right. Yeah. He's, he's running for president while he's, you know, criming. Yeah. So. And he's made it very clear what the stakes are. If he gets in again, that's it. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to everything. So there's the, um, you have in the notes, there's a judge that's going to be setting a trial for Trump's, uh, the judge is going to set a trial for the D.C., set a date for the D.C. trial? Um, there is a hearing on Monday to set okay. his D.C. trial date. Yes. yes. I'm not, not sure not which. Sure. I'm not sure which of the D.C. ones that, oh, the D.C. one would be the, the J January 6th one. So January yes. 6th. Yes. And that's a Jack Smith one. And who's, I keep forgetting who's the judge in that one. That's not. The judge in that one is Chutak. Oh, Chutkin, right? Chutkin, Chutkin. But I don't Chutkin. know if she, I, I, I guess she's the one who would be setting that date. As opposed to the. Uh, As opposed to a magistrate. Administrative judge. Yeah. 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 And she has said that if he, uh, fucks around he's going to find out that she's yeah. going to give him an early date i mean yeah. you know the chutzpah of them asking for 2026 for their oh my God. <laughs> can you just wait till after the election would you mind 
two years after the election. Two years. It's going to take two us years. such a long time to go through all this discovery. Oh, my God. All this discovery that we had in our possession. Right. <laughs> because we stole it. So, and I'm confused about, so the Mar-a-Lago case is also a Jack Smith case, isn't it? Yes. And and where is that? And that's the one that Judge Cannon has, right? And Judge Cannon really, um, really made a mistake that became apparent this week. Like she wanted to know why there was an ongoing grand jury, even after the indictments had come down. And you will recall that there was a superseding indictment yeah. a little over a week ago. And so what happened with that is that Jack Smith filed a response to Aileen Cannon's question, why do you still have a grand jury? And he says, well, we've stopped the grand jury now, but the reason why we had to reopen another grand jury is that one of the um, Trump employees who had been represented by a Trump paid attorney, mm -hmm. um, you know, was rightly questioned about the conflict of interest and he got himself a public defender and immediately changed his testimony. Yeah. Because he was lying when he had a Trump attorney. That's right. Because he gave false testimony. That's right. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so you wonder if that's going to happen more. And well, you've got 19 defendants in Georgia, and that judge has only been on the job since February. So. And I don't know anything about him. He, he had been a prosecutor, but so had Cannon. Like that's, well, prosecutors are really the pool up until pretty recently from, from which judges Most. are taken, yeah. you know, and yeah. which is one of the problems that, you know, Biden's administration is aiming to kind of rectify. That's um, right. But, but that's on the federal bench. That's on the federal state. bench, but, you know, this is a state case. But yeah. um, the, the, you know, there are, you know, Fonnie Willis, you know, is a prosecutor. I'm not, you know, I'm not denig denigrating prosecutors necessarily. It's just, um, but, you know, in, in this Georgia case, there's, there's 18 co-defendants of his mm -hmm. that you have to wonder who their, I mean, I wonder, I don't know about who their representation is. No, and I don't think all of them do either. And you and know? how how Trump connected that representation is or is going to be, and what kind well, of pressure? You know, Gina Ellis isn't getting represented by the Trump pack. Well, she's out with the Trump pack, isn't she? She's you know right. she's persona non grata with them. So she's go funding her, go funding me her. Uh, well, she got like six thousand dollars out of five hundred thousand. She's trying to raise four hundred thousand. Oh, did she get that much? Looked. Last I looked, she, it's not enough, but. Yeah, come help me pay my legal bills for trying to overthrow the country. Maybe that's why oh, she right. smiled in her mugshot. Some of these people look deranged and like the, the fans who are putting up their own mugshots. Oh, did you see the Marjorie Taylor Greene one? They look like they're taking pictures at the prom. They're deranged. These people are ill. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, and just some of the regular, you know, the regular rank and file, you know, humans walking around, the regular Trumpies that are like putting up their, their little mug shots and. In their world, in their world, you know, their hero is being persecuted for, for solidarity things that are not crime. 
Oh my God. That's what's so frightening. Yeah. So, I mean, like, what, what can we do to push back against the only, in my mind, the only real, real threat to a Biden victory? which is the, you know, the no labels party and the, the third, like what, can I, can I tell you how, this is a, a slight aside, how like shocked and heartbroken I am about Gavin De Becker. <laughs> I mean, you thought he was a good guy? <laughs> He wrote, no, I mean, I hadn't heard of him since, like, I read his books when my oldest kid was eight years old. So we're talking, you know, close to 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote a great book called The Gift of Fear. And um, about um, the trusting your gut and your instincts and why um, children, in particular girls, had been socialized out of trusting their gut when they sensed fear or when they sensed they were in danger. Um, and, you know, and, and you know, because he'd done a lot of work in child abduction cases and um, things like that. Like, I thought he was like some hero. And I didn't he and he was a hero. I was like eight. I read those books and I'm like, oh, my God, these are amazing books. And they were really helpful. They gave me the language to help to tell my daughter when she was, you know, then very little, you know, OK, this is what you do if somebody approaches you or uses this language with you or if it's a teacher or a babysitter or whatever if you have a gut you know all, all you know it's really good language to help you know prepare young kids for you know in teaching them to trust their guts mm -hmm. and um they um and 20 years goes by and i never hear about the guy again like, I didn't know anything about, and then all of a sudden now, it's it all of a sudden to me, I mean, for people who are in the know, apparently it's not a, a, a new thing. I had no idea he was such an evil person. <laughs> you can be both heroic in some parts of your life. Yeah, and that's why I'm and saying, like, to me, this is a big disappointment. It, but it's not a surprise. Because of what, what, what were his other, what were the clues? What else has he been Who doing? Who are his there? clients? Who does he work for? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't, I'm Billion. sorry. He only works for the very wealthiest people. Okay. But doing what? Like, He's all I knew was that he was an author from a million years ago. That's all I knew. No, he was a security guy. He was a law, he was law enforcement. He was security. He was one of those guys when there would be a death threat on Johnny Carson. He's one of the people that we would call. Okay. So he had, okay. So he's a bodyguard, personal security, you know. Yeah. But again, like if you would tell me that, you know, 20 years ago, Johnny Carson trusted this guy, I would think, okay, he's probably a good guy. But things were not so. Things were, again, 20 years ago, things were different, right? Things were different. So again, I, I didn't keep tabs on what he'd been doing and associating with. Right. So when so I saw bad. when I saw his name, I was like, "What? Gavin De Becker is like a fucking Looney Tunes." Yeah, and actually, I'm not sure that Gavin De Becker was one of the people that we actually called, but that was the type of person, right? That was called in. Yeah. You know? And yeah, there were death threats. You know, those came in all the time. Oh, I'm sure they did. I'm sure. So like that was, so that's kind of, that's an aside, but you know, good Lord. So, so you got, you, you know, we're fighting the likes of, of the no labels. Um, so that's Gavin DeBecker and who else is, is the no labels? Um, 
Oh, it just went out of my head. Who's the Hogan? Oh, your Hogan, former, right? Your former governor. Um, right, Hogan. He's the vice yeah. chair, the vice, the, the, the yeah. There's of, a lot of people the there. You know, I see no labels as a threat, but we have a multifaceted threat. Cornell West. Well, he's running with the Green Party. I know, but like everything that that shears off a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. No, yes. it's it's a multifaceted threat landscape, and then you also have these sneaky voting bills that are getting passed. You have what's going on in North Carolina right now, where they oh. passed a terrible bill that's going to disenfranchise people. And let me guess which people. The Democratic governor has vetoed it, but they have a veto-proof majority. The Republicans have a veto-proof majority because it's so gerrymandered. Yeah. So, um, you know, Mark Elias is saying, you know, if they override the veto, we will we will sue. But, um, you know, you've got these things happening all over right now in Tennessee. And this isn't so much about voting rights at the moment as about a possible gun bill that would not give us everything we want, but would be a step up where, I mean, they're, they're basically just asking for background checks. They're just trying. And, and that's a red flag. In Tennessee that they removed, that they had troopers removing moms, uh, yes. women who were- Coveted moms. Moms who are Christian, Republican, moms who just lost children at their school at the at, covenant at, shooting at the christian school right right and they are being disrespected disrespected they were physically removed yeah. they're not Our getting a voice you're not getting to speak to anybody the speaker will have none of it um never mind what they're doing to you know the democrats in the in the chamber like justin jones and justin pearson yeah. I love Gloria Johnson's tweets Please. from going there. I love that she's running for senator. And I, I don't know if a Democrat can win statewide over there, but boy, that would be nice. She is, um, she is a, you know, knock wood. I, she, she's, you know, walking the walk as an ally. Yes. Um, she, is. she was a teacher. She was a teacher who had experienced a school shooting when she was teaching. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is a multifaceted threat. Um, we're, and, we're, yeah. we're not guaranteed a Biden. Yeah, you know, we're not guaranteed anything. But you know, we we did just despite um, despite the the magnificent ad blitzes and social media operations and and the incredible economy and the you know, well, nobody knows we've got an incredible economy. Well, we're, I mean, some people know, I mean, we're, you know, t I, in the circles I run in, we know, but, you know, I can't be the only one who knows. We the mood in the country is still sour, despite the incredible economy. So that's what I wonder, how do we... Um, I don't know. Because we don't even that. have social media that works anymore. Yeah, well, thank you, Melon. Melon Husk. Well, except that it's not just him. The other tech overlords like Zuckerberg are following his lead. Yeah, I we saw that. We don't need no stinking uh, moderation. We don't yeah. need to, to watch for disinformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, YouTube and Facebook, there was just some, some yeah. bad news about that today, this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's disheartening. Well, people in power want to yeah. hold on to their power. Yeah, except that when you've got authoritarians, you know, your share of the power, you don't get to keep it. Mm -hmm. They're not looking, you know, 
you know, again, it, it's kind of like that report that the Daily Beast had of all of the journalistic, the White House correspondents, the Washington, Washington people who all were wined and dined by the Trump campaign just Ugh. before the debate. That was disgusting. Talk about access journalism, right? Oh my God, ew. Dana Bash from CNN, who else? There was, who were all seen dying with, but with the Trump team. It was uh, Dana Bash, Shane Goldmacher, Kristen Welker, Bob Costa. Oh, Kristen Welker. Ashley Burns. Ugh. Rush Dossie. Um, oh, just a lot disgusting. of people. And they were, they were dining with uh, Chris LaCivita, Jason Miller, and Stephen Chung of the Trump campaign. Yeah. Yeah, and, and with, with bingo cards for... Um like anti-DeSantis bingo cards. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all anti-DeSantis too, but Jesus Christ. We've learned nothing. Like Beltway Media, Beltway Media has learned nothing. No, they still covered that thing. Talk about wanting to hang on to their power. Yeah. They covered that thing like it was a sports event. They're talking about winners and losers. They're they're not talking about substance. Not and talking I know about it's kind of hard since there wasn't much substance in the thing. Um, you know, they're focused on the personalities, which is you know what the the participants were trying to give them anyway. I mean, Rama Swami. Oh my God! <laughs> what a weirdo. I mean, what a what a creepy. It's financed by Peter Thiel and Leonard Leo. Ugh, Leonard Leo. I mean, you just got he he's so he's so plastic. You know how we used to watch comic book movies, and there'd be Lex Luthor. And, and yes. I mean, we live in, yes. we live in the Marvel universe now. We do. With super all villains. we have are these rich billionaire supervillains, right? And we, all we have is Dark Brandon <laughs> to try and fight them. <laughs> no, we have more than that. We, we, we do have, have more than that. We have we Kamala have Harris. Buttigieg. We have Pete Buttigieg. We have um, we have Gavin Newsom, who's useful sometimes. Um, <laughs> you know, we have we no we have we have, um, you know, Gloria in Tennessee. I just forgot her last name. Nancy. Um, we 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 do have um. We and, have and we have Gen Z. And we and have Gen Z. Gen Z is, you know. We have it, the youth. We have the fact that in nearly every state that has um, had Roe thrown back at it, Roe wins. Yeah. Um, we Which have a lot. Why- which we is have, why they're going to go with voter suppression yeah. and going to divide us. And I know, but I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, we we have some things. We we yes, can't we act like we have nothing. We have we have Pritzker. We have Westmore in my state. Yeah, we we do. have um we 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 do have some things. We do we have, have some people. things. We have some weapons. Um. So, but your I, question was how to fight no labels. How do we fight I them? Don't know, and I don't know. I don't know the answer. In a fragmented media universe where we're also fighting these weird algorithms and misinformation and targeted misinformation. I mean, is the answer just to talk to the people that we know? I'm sorry? Is the answer just to talk to the people that we know? Yeah. Get out the I mean, vote. That is the, the vote is the yeah. only answer. You know, in, in good news, it was uh, in Georgia. You're allowed to hand out water and snacks to people standing in line again. 
Oh, that's good. When did that happen? That happened this past week. A judge ruled that that, that law good. is, is, is the, that he, he good. good. Yeah. Um, you know, the judiciary, except in, you know, in most circuits, the judiciary has been, even in Trump appointed places, you know, even yeah. judges that Trump appointed are for the most part coming down on the right side of things. Not everyone he appointed was incompetent. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we have facts and we can talk to people that we know and we can work on get out the vote. I mean, that might be the thing we have to do. Just everything we it's can to be sending it. money to every every place where there are these, you know, attempts at voter suppression. You know, maybe those are the places that we need to be sending our money and send, you know, if, if we have if we have a little bit of time and a little bit of energy, those are the places we need to send postcards and send, you know, whatever, yeah. if, if you spend an hour a week. Yeah. You know, we can't throw hands up and um, act um, fatalistic about it. No. That's what's going to, that's going to really yeah. do us in. And that'll yeah. also sap our energy. You're right. You know, when we sit here with our head in our hands and say, you know, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And it's so it's going to be there are so many ways he can win. It's I mean, important. There are, but there's a lot of ways we there's a lot of ways we can win. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So while it is important to know where the landmines are. Or most of the landmines, there is a path around them, and that path. Is through getting out the vote yeah and talking and one-on-one -on -one. and and what what i have said in the past and what i what i still have to bring to the front of my mind all the time when when people who are with me on the issues but are feeling so pessimistic you know my my go-to response to them is what are you doing about it You're worried Trump's going to win? Okay, what are you doing to help make sure that's not going to happen? There you go. Are you sending money somewhere? Are you, you know, what's what's your part in this? You can do something. Are you canvassing? Are you knocking on doors? Are, are you, you knocking on doors? Okay, so you can, okay, so you walk with a cane. You can't knock on doors. What can you do? Can you write a postcard? Can you, okay, you know, so writing, you know, you wear glasses or whatever, writing is hard for you. Can you make a phone call? Can you, can, can you do this? Can, can you just send some money, send 10 bucks a month? There you to, go. What, what can you do? That's, do that's the message. You know, ask that's yourself. The message. That's, that's, the, what that's what we have to be determined to do. What are you doing? Are you know, and, um, you know. Not even a year and a half, it's a year and a couple of months. What are, we're almost in September already. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's my dad's birthday today. I have to call him. <laughs> well, it's I was hoping, birthday. I was hoping that today would be the day Trump turned himself in because it was his birthday. It was my dad's birthday. And I was going to think that would be a really awesome present for him. Really got it, it was Carolee's birthday yesterday. Yeah, so yeah. she got it on her birthday. Yeah. And that's just as good. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Um, but, um, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, so what's, um, what else is on the list? Well, you do recall back in June when we were just watching breathlessly what was happening in Russia, <gasps> oh, Prigozhin's, um, Prigozhin's mutiny and, uh, Today was his fuck, or yesterday, or two days ago was his fuck around and find out day where his plane got uh, blown up or something. Or something. You know, the, Are we sure he was on the plane? Are we convinced? He was probably on the plane. Yeah, okay. He was probably on the plane. Um, there was a funny Anthony Blinken quote that somebody oh God. on NBC was, was saying where he talked about how the U.S. has an open door policy, but uh, Putin's got an open window policy. 
<laughs> well, I saw somebody say, uh, you know, what did the plane fall out a window or something? <laughs> you know, and isn't it awful that we hear this news and everybody's going to, everybody just goes, oh, that tracks. Yeah. You know, we're, or we're everybody's, right. everybody's ready with an open window joke. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, what, you wouldn't drink the tea? <laughs> so yeah. Colonel Vinman, Alexander Vinman, oh, yeah. that the disruption of the Wagner group. So it wasn't just Prigozhin. The other there people, were other people on the plane, right? The, yeah, we're also leaders of Wagner. Yeah. And there's been infighting because um, over who's going to control what's going on in Africa, because that's a big money maker. Sure. Um, so um, you've got the the mercenaries who are fighting for Wagner, who are being absorbed into the Russian military. Right. Lucky and, them. And they're not going to be paid what they were being paid. Right. Oh, boo hoo. <laughs> so. Um, this doesn't, you know, like like Putin's consolidating his power and showing who's in charge, but it doesn't mean that things are going to be stable. No, and I don't really think, I mean, maybe he might be showing who's in charge for now, but I still think that whole episode in June really shook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you better believe it. You better believe it. Of, of what's going on over yeah. there and his, um, his grasp mm -hmm. on power. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like everything over there is, is, in terms of his grip, is a lot more tenuous now. Um, which is one of the reasons... <laughs> One of the reasons that I've, I've heard some people whose opinions I really respect saying, are, are we sure he was even on the plane? Yeah. You know, are we sure just because his name's on the manifest? Do we know, you know, might this be, you know, he's, you know, uh, he, he's got plenty of money. He, you know, he's a, he's a billionaire many times over all on his own. Mm -hmm. Could he have, you know. Yeah, it, it's, it's not implausible. You know, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure you're right. And that, you know, chances are he was. But, you well, know, the U.S. government seems to think that he was. Yeah. If, if the Washington Post is reporting it and, you know, whatever. I, I saw a funny headline that said, you know, Putin offers his sincere condolences. <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> Who had to write that and like. Try to like keep a straight face with that one. I'm sure Putin offered his sincere condolences. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's um, and you know, you know, a year and a half later, who'd have thought we'd still be dealing? Well, I mean, actually, a lot of people would have thought because when when Putin invaded. It's kind of like this, the the difference, you know, when people, when, when the Civil War started, there there was a, a, a group of people who thought, you know, oh, this will be, this will be over by the weekend. Right. You know? Right. And, uh, you know, it's the same thing, that, you know, people, people in Russia thought, you know, oh, mm -hmm. this, will, this will be over in, in, you know, half an hour. And the mm -hmm. people who knew Ukrainians, um we're like, uh, he doesn't know what he just stepped into, and neither does any anybody who's betting against anybody who's betting on Russia doesn't know, you know, shit from Shinola about the Ukrainian people. Well, on top um, of that, you know, Putin spent all of the Trump administration enjoying Trump's efforts to break apart the Western Alliance. Yeah. And speaking of Putin, he was pretty well represented from what I understand on the Republican debate stage. Yes. But Dark Brandon has what he has done. He's made NATO bigger. He's made NATO stronger. Yep. 
He's and even gotten uh, Switzerland to hasn't yes. does Switzerland want to join NATO now? Yeah. And <laughs> and he's had Zelensky's back the whole time, un unwaveringly. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is one of the reasons why it wasn't a cakewalk for Russia. No. And there and there are still people on the Republican side who are saying we're sent, you know, stop giving the you stop giving Ukraine a blank check. Yeah. They, they seem to think that we don't have enough money for FEMA in Maui. Right. The horrific fire. Which right. was caused by climate change, which they won't, um, which they which they deny exists. Deny. But um, and you know that we can't do yeah. both. That we can't do foreign policy and take care of our own. And the thing is, we can. We just need right. to tax billionaires. And it's not even like they're saying we don't have enough money to do. Right. It's. I mean, it's just what you're saying. It's not like they want to cut back on funds for Ukraine so that we can feed poor people or, or educate, you know, underprivileged people or maybe relieve student debt. There is no, <laughs> no they want, they, they, they want, want to it. not give money to Ukraine so that they can have more money for their tax breaks and for their yachts and for their, you know what I mean? Like they, they just don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to give money to people who are fighting for freedom in Europe and fighting for their lives here at home and fighting it's because because they're the age of multinationals you know there there's no there's no loyalty to one's own country no just to one's capital no. i was just going to say to their wallet to their bank account mm-hmm. what have you done for me right and that's the difference between anybody who tells me there's no difference between Democrats and Republicans. I will get they they better be ready for a long conversation with me because I have got time. I will make time. I don't care if I have a train to catch. Right. I will make time for that conversation. And, and don't use the term corporate Democrat. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. I mean, I'll, I'll even argue about the good Mike Bloomberg has done. Forget about, I mean, listen, I'll, you know, <laughs> Mike Bloomberg has, has, has given like hundreds of millions of dollars to Johns Hopkins hospitals and to, you know, like I'll, I can do that. He I, should I be taxed more, but I'm. He should be taxed more, more, but I'm not, I mean, I'm going to acknowledge those things. No. <laughs> so we have a few minutes Democrats. Left. You know, yeah. We have a few minutes left. Yeah. Monday is the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington, where John Lewis made the I Have a Dream speech. Martin Luther King Jr. Ma- yeah, Martin Luther King Jr., excuse me. John, John Lewis, Lewis. Act- also spoke there, and he was the one that everybody was concerned about because his speech was radical. In today's Washington Post, there was a wonderful oral history of the march no. it's a must read because, oh, I because, read it. because all the people involved you know all the people who were young then are very old people now we're going to lose those voices yeah you have to read i mean eliza it brought tears to my eyes i want to read it i'm going to read I mean, it it brought tears to my eyes for what what that event was yeah and, and I, I remember hearing about John, John Lewis being slipping backwards. Yeah, be, being upset about having his remarks um, edited. Yes, should I say? Um, and they were edited. They were. They um, were edited, but he, left, um, he still he gave right. a fiery speech, and it was still fiery. But even yeah. unedited, those unedited remarks were on the money. Yeah, and, and they're still on the money. <laughs> And they're still on the money. And Martin Luther King Jr.'s remarks, his, his, you know, everybody thinks he's all, you know, the, the, I mean, even, even liberal people still have um, a slightly, a, a too rosy yeah. view of, you know, how they, they don't quite get how radical Martin Luther King Jr. was um, and how um, his 
how 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 accountable he tried to hold white people right. for um for their crime. It's because the only sentence they know is I have a dream. That's, That's the, the only, only you know, and I that people should be judged by their character and not by the color of their right. skin. And that's the right. only thing that they And they don't up. look at the rest of the speech. They don't they've never read the letter from the jail cell in Birmingham. They've never read any, you know. So um but yeah. Okay, that's that's uh that's we should put that on our page. I will do that. What are you watching? Are you watching any good TV or are you just I'm like still dealing with stuff? You know, yeah. we oh. we spent we spent the month of May on vacation in Europe for 3 weeks, a little over 3 weeks. Right, that's we right. Back. We came back. We had a bunch of turmoil and stuff and then July 15th, we got the call that my mother-in-law was in end of life care. Yeah. And, you know, 12 hours later, we were on a plane. You were on a plane. Yeah. And um, I I was in the UK for a month, over a month. And so they don't have television in the UK. They have television. But I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not, it's not the same stuff. No. So, um, I've been catching up. We, we finished star trek and i've caught up on only murders in the building so i'm i'm all caught oh, up. oh i have there. one of those i need to watch yeah and um the after party i'm enjoying the after party i've never seen what's that on that's on apple oh, tv the after party i've never heard of that it is a murder a comedy murder mystery and each episode is done in the style of a different movie genre no way it's okay the after party and, and well, this is the second season right now. So you've got two right. seasons to catch up. Okay. It's well, we have been at our, do we're, we're watching, you know, of course they only drop one a week now, which is really annoying. It's like back to the old days where you have to wait a week, but you know, we're watching Justified, the, you know, the reboot, the new uh -huh. Justified. We're watching Only Murders in the Building and um, a third thing, which escapes me. Oh, Reservation Dogs, which I was so thrilled. I that is were... so good. It is amazing. But I thought that last season was the last one. I didn't realize there was going to be another season. So, yes, Reservation Dogs is art. It is yeah. art. Um, but at my daughter's very impressive persistence, insistence, we have been watching Righteous Gemstones. I've heard that's great too. So good. So I'm glad good. there is so much television I have not seen because this strike is still ongoing. I know. And I already saw Suits when it was new. I don't want to watch that now. Oh. So, um, <laughs> I've never seen that. So um, I know there, we're going to. You know, in, in the days of the USA Network, silly procedural, you know, it was fun. Yeah. You know, I, 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 would, out now? I would love to see USA Network come back with those kind of shows. But, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't think they, they, who knows, you know, if the writers get what they want, which is a return to, you know, larger orders and, and good size writing rooms and a yeah. minimum um, kind of pay for themselves. You know, that'll be great. If not, we're going to have a lot of AI generated crap to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Yep. Yep. Well, we binged season one of Righteous Gemstones, and I know there's at least one more season. So, um, yes. Uh, Yes, I think there's two more seasons. Of two that. more seasons. Yeah, there's two more yeah, seasons so on HBO there. on Max. On Max. Um, yeah, on Max. Whatever. <laughs> I know. Nobody calls it Max and nobody calls Twitter X. Yeah. And, so um, anyway, I have to um, yeah. I have to hold up my shirt. Yay. Barbie now. Antifa. Antifa Barbie. <laughs> Love it. On that note, we're gonna say goodbye this week. We missed you, Carolee. We missed you, Carolee. Join us next week hopefully with carolee yes. 
on YouTube, mamacrats.buzzsprout.com, or on your favorite podcast service, such as iTunes, Google, and Amazon Music. And be sure to check our Facebook page for updates. Um, I'm Donna Schwartz-Mills. That's Eliza Worthington. We're saying goodbye for the Mama Crats. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Mama Crats Mama Chat is part of the Demcast family of podcasts.